We have always made the assumption that the bodies of transistors are uniformly doped. This is not true for modern transistors. So one parameter that was very important when discussing narrow and short channel effects was X depletion max, the maximum depth of the depletion zone. Um, in long channel transistors and in transistors where the uh, doping of the body is uniform, X depletion max is a complicated function. Uh, so the depth of the depletion region increases and then it starts to saturate when the surface potential of the silicon saturates. Um, in modern devices, however, we use something called steep retrograde doping. And in steep retrograde doping, the doping of the, of the body is non-uniform. And so if you uh, try to sketch the level of doping versus depth, so this is doping concentration, it could be Na in, in case you are talking about a, a P-type body. And this is the depth. You'll find that doping starts at a very small value and then increases deep into the body into the normal doping levels that you would expect uh, in a long channel transistor. The reason we use uh, light doping in the uh, near the, the surface, even though this would um, probably increase the resistivity of the well, is because we are concerned about the mobility of carriers. So mobility of electrons and holes is a complicated function of a lot of factors, but what one factor in which it is a very clear function is doping. Higher doping means more irregularities in the crystal. These irregularities will cause the electron to collide more often. If it collides more often, it will uh, come to a complete stop more often, and therefore it will observe a lower average velocity. Uh, and so mobility is a strong function of doping. The higher the doping, the lower the mobility. We cannot, however, tolerate uh, light doping deep in the body because this could exacerbate a lot of, of, uh, of effects, not the least of which is latch up. So uh, one problem uh, with latch up is when well and substrate resistance is high. And one way to combat this is to reduce these resistances. So we should keep doping uh, heavy at uh, uh, deeper in the body. So. Uh, let's just say that this is the, let's call this X doping. So this is the depth at which the doping returns to its original uh, levels. Now, going back to the uh, transistor model, we find that the amount of charge in the, uh, below the oxide, in this uh, substrate below the oxide, is going to be controlled by two capacitances. One of them is C oxide, and one of them is C depletion. So this is the discussion we had when we discussed uh, subthreshold conduction. There's C depletion and there's C oxide. And so the charge here in the uh, channel is going to be coupled by both of these. In fact, we can write Q channel is equal to minus C oxide into VGS plus uh, minus V threshold naught plus C depletion into VSB. Now, the difference in the sign of the uh, charges is because uh, C oxide is coupling charges on its bottom plate, whereas C depletion is coupling charges on its top plate. Um, now, this can be rewritten as Q channel is equal to minus C oxide into minus VGS plus V threshold naught plus C depletion divided by C oxide into VSB. But we do know that the charge in the channel is going to be equal to minus C oxide into minus VGS plus V threshold. So this means that V threshold is equal to V threshold naught plus C depletion divided by C oxide into VSB. If you don't know why this is true, this is by definition of the Q in the channel and by definition of the threshold voltage. Any mobile charge in the channel is going to be uh, C oxide into VGS minus V threshold. So the threshold voltage is deviated from its V threshold naught value, where V threshold naught is the normal expression of V threshold we know, by this amount. Now this amount is controlled by the ratio between C depletion and C oxide. So if we write 
this ratio C depletion by C oxide. C oxide is epsilon oxide times the area of the channel, which is W over L, divided by T oxide. Uh, C depletion is uh, epsilon, but in this case, the insulator for uh, C depletion is not oxide. The insulator is depleted silicon, which has the same epsilon as normal silicon. So this is epsilon silicon. And the area of this capacitor is still W times L, but the thickness of the of the oxide is the thickness uh, the th thickness of the insulator is the thickness of the uh, depletion region. So we are going to write here X depletion. Okay. So uh, this is going to reduce into uh, epsilon silicon multiplied by T oxide over uh, epsilon oxide multiplied by X depletion. Now this ratio in uh, in long channel transistors was dominated by the expression of X depletion. The expression of X depletion is very complicated because it's related to VSB. Uh, and when you pursue this a little bit deeper, it will give you the expression of threshold voltage with body effect that you are used to. But in steep retrograde doping, X depletion is not actually that complicated of a function. Uh, if you increase the depth of the depletion region, the value of X depletion max is not a function of anything other than the depth of doping. So it's a constant. So the depth of the depletion region does not saturate based on a complicated number of factors as is the case with long channel transistors. It saturates at the depth of light doping. And so X de depletion can be replaced with uh, X doping. And therefore we can write the expression V threshold is equal to V threshold naught not plus um, C depletion by C oxide is going to be epsilon silicon T oxide divided by uh, epsilon silicon times X doping multiplied by VSB. Everything here is a constant and therefore this whole thing is a constant. And therefore we see here a new form of body effect. This is steep retrograde doping body effect. So this is a much stronger body effect than the normal body effect we are used to in long channel transistors. Uh, and uh, it actually has a linear impact on threshold voltage.